से दिन सका सका समुद्र थिला आम चारिकड़े ढे मैने खिलखिली हसुले आम घर पहाच सामन दुब अरुआ चाउल नड़िया और गेडु फुल जहाँ थी समुद्र ऋणर सामान्य सुध घेना करी सरागरे खेड़ी उदार समुद्र ता समान महत पुरुष आसी ढड़ा होता मुहपरी अकिंचन खातक दुआर मन रखी ए हीन अधम नाम विशा ओ अंतर्हीन दुर्बुद्धता हिसाब खातारे अक्षहणीता सेनानी काबू कर रास्ता घाट गृक्ष घर प्रत्येक वस्तु धारणा ता अनंत विस्तार रे सबु एकाकार विछण रु उठी सूर्य घुषुरी घुषुरी आगेले पादे पादे नील आकाश रे समुद्र गला मुहूर्त के चीनी परी सका मो चाह कप्रे जाद परिचित भूचित्र सबु चित्र परित्यक्त निर्जन बेल से असुझा ऋण स्मृति आज ओंकी मारे अंतर्हित शीतर स्वप्न On 17th September 1937, in the village Mahanga, on the banks of Chitrotpala, a river in Orissa, Sita Kant left home at the tender age of 16 and went to Katak for higher studies. It was in this very year, in 1953, that he wrote his first poem, "Relish of Tears." He graduated in 1957 from Ravenshaw College, Katak. and proceeded to Allahabad for his post graduation after teaching for 2 years in Utkal University he joined the Indian Administrative Service in 1961 the 1993 Gyanpeet award is the latest in the series Sita Kant has received in a distinguished career spanning over 4 decades the Central Sahitya Academy award the second world hindi conference award the soviet land nehru award kumaran asan poetry award the orissa sahitya academy award the vishwa and the sarala award can make any living author envious sita kant mahapatra renders some poems in his own voice and outlines the major concerns and metaphors in his poetry I was born in a village which perches on the river Chitrotpala. This river is a branch of the Mahanadi. I spent my childhood days and the school days in this village. It's a typical village like any other Indian village, almost a speck outside time and a number of memories associated with my days years in this village have gone into my poetry the reading of the bhagavat oriya bhagavat every evening is one of the fond memories i cherish my father was a great lover of classical sanskrit and oriya poetry and from him i had the privilege of listening from a number of oriya classical writers there were also occasions when one came across the festivities the river scape the burning ghat on the river bed the children playing on the river all these have become a part of my memory to such an extent that even today when i close my eyes i can visualize the river and its uh the small wavelets which play on this river then when i came to ravensa college at katak i was in the east hostel where i took on the editing of a journal which has made a name in oriya's literary history the journal jagarana which has been associated with the names of people like gopinath mohanty 
Kalindi Charan Panigrahi, Ramakant Rath, and many others. It was in this hostel that some of my first poems in the years 53 to 57 were written. After that, I went to the uh, Allahabad University where for my post-graduation. So in these years, the memories that I brought in, I have always felt that a creative writer's childhood, what goes into the making of his memories, his childhood, inevitably shapes his way of looking at reality, and they have a tendency to come back now and again. And the village for me doesn't remain only a geographical setting. It becomes part of my spiritual inheritance, as it were, to which in memory I return in more ways than one, and the events take on newer meanings, newer nuances. Samoy bohi jayani, loko mane bohi janti. Sachara chara, prani mane hi bohi janti. Khoiriya kot pindhi thiwa megho, dando pindhare kantho ko auji, akash ko anei bohi thiwa chitra pratima, bapanku vidai vidai kohi bohi jaya. Tapara dina, bapa amoku pachho kari, pachai pachai bohi janti seyade, dikbalo e talaku, vidai neu thiwa suchyanka sangare. Vidai vidai kohi jhadi pade patra, kandu thiwa gachaku, tara dino kaatho kataliye hani nai thanti. Koo dino chida hai thiwa maate thu, se vidai nai. Achanak dushi jaye, gharo, ghaato, noi, bano, bilo, pato, stri, puo, sanga saathi, akalana samayar jiti chitra pato, bohi janti andhar aadaku. से अंधार तम छाई तम को निश्चय जणा काहे की भासी जाऊ छु आमे सब आउ कुआडो को सीताकांत महापात्रास फर्स्ट कलेक्शन ऑफ पोएम्स दीप्ति ओ दियुति द ग्लो एंड द इल्यूमिनेशन वाज पब्लिश्ड इन 1963 सिंस देन देयर हैव बीन 10 मोर वाइडली अक्लेम्ड वॉल्यूम्स ऑफ वर्स दीस हैव बीन वाइडली ट्रांसलेटेड इनटू इंडियन एंड यूरोपियन लैंग्वेजेस eight in English, six in Hindi, two each in Urdu and Malayalam, and one each in Bengali, Kannada, French, German, Swedish, Danish, and Romanian. Besides these, he has written extensively on literature and culture, some of which has been included in books like The Curve of Meaning, Barefoot into Reality, Gestures of Intimacy. He has been hailed as a poet in whom the modern sensibility is unalienated from tradition. It has been appreciated for its lucidity, the flavor of the folk idiom, an intense quest for meaning, and a quiet tone unburdened either by rhetoric or self-pity. It has been called as poetry that is in the same breath, troubled and calm, full of pathos and cheerfulness, a poetry in which the awareness of death and the ability to dream are close neighbors. Sita Kant Mahapatra has also been described as a poet of memory and relationship, as one who reminds us of the possibility of hope and love in these dark and troubled times. Sura Nabhiri Nishabdari Rati Sara Tara Vukakar Jhari Mandirar Pokhari Tuthari Apari Channa Tushya Tali Poka इतिहास परंपरा कचा हुई विद्यादाता गणेशं को प्रसस्त पीठी रे अंधो देवतां को परी निजो ख्याल रे बड़े बड़े दम का ए हवा परी दुई चारी बादुडी जानती उड़ी अंधार अभ्यंतर रू अनिश्चितो भविष्यतो आड़े उदासीनो आकाशर दाढ़े दिर्घो आव असरंति अपरान्न सरिया से दुरोरे सगड़ो गाड़ी के� मने हुए समय ऑटो की जीवो आउ टिक्को करे और अमा गोहिरी बिलो अपन्तरा आशा हीनो संजो अंधार रे कहाँ को किए डाकुचे सरागरे आकांखरे लोभरे दुखरे ये जन्मरे आराजनमरे पानीरो वसारा आउ जोड़ मुहरे हँसो अकस्मात आशारो इंगी तो हुई मंदिरोर छाई 
आउ यी आसु थिवा जन उभयं कु स्नेह रे ओटा रे अपेक्षा रे दिन सरे हाई मारी उठि जिबा आगु केही हेले आसंतनी जणे आरती भक्त कुष्ठि भिकारीटी निज मन कु पचारे सिंस आई रोट माय फर्स्ट पोएम इन 1953 40 लॉन्ग इयर्स हैव गॉन बाय ऑलमोस्ट एज ए विंक 40 इयर्स of losses, loves, memories, friendships, intimacies. Poetry, like any other art, is at its heart what time does to man. These 40 years of anguished moments, the pain of growing up, the attempt to seek and realize what is happening within oneself, and the world around us in our own time, the layers and layers of memory with the myriad colors of feelings, emotions, deprivations, desires, passions and defeats, the endless process of events and memories. And I have always felt that the act of creativity, the task of writing a poem, is to relive experience, to have it when it is before you, and then through the poem, get back to in, in memory. In fact, my anthology, Feri Asivara Bello, the time of return, is this phenomenon which I have noticed in my creative self, that sometimes an experience becomes clearer to you when you are back to it in memory, it becomes even more intimate than when you have gone through it. When I look back to the beginning of particular poems when they formed inside me, I am deeply aware how many of them have eventually found a structure in words. But there are also others which have never materialize finally into a poem, like a seed which has been too much deep inside the soil or deprived of sunshine or moisture, it has never been made into a poem. I have allowed often a poem to grow inside me until it has found a point of getting transformed into words only when I have put it on record. There have been instances also when I have begun a poem and then perhaps left it off halfway and have returned to it maybe sometimes after months or even a year to complete it. That way poetry for me is the tale of this 40 years quest, inadequate, incomplete and never fully satisfying but always generating new diamonds of experience and the words to clothe these experiences with. Every beginning has been a kind of realization that it is still inadequate. Ispar chadhei je udi jaye je jaye na otoke neli pani gondare chak chak rupara chamako machak ane bako na otoke Kuni Balipanta Potare, Conte Kuli Kai, Pahucha Pahucha Kajuri Gachare, Bossa Bandivaku. Ispat Chari, J. Udijae Jejae. Kagoja Koloru, Rati Durgunda Bola, Muruto Premikor Chiti, Antaridhari, Barabati, Raja Jemaku, Molina John Hare, Kujutai, J. Kujutai. For me, poetry is not a battle of ideas or an attempt to speak about the sociology of emotion or the metaphysics of our being and becoming. Instead, it is an attempt to hold on to the experience which is anchored on the fleeting moments and to look into their soul until they reveal their true meanings to us. My poetry doesn't believe that there is 
a, an eternity which is beyond the present. Instead, it believes that it is the here and the now that is at the heart of our existence. And that it is only by looking deeply into our ordinariness, by our day-to-day -day existence, by the quotidian, that we can find out whatever meaning it is there in our life. And trust the words, persuade the words to convey what has to be said, knowing fully well that perhaps what you need to say will ever remain unsayable, and what you have said is perhaps only a fragment of what you intended to say, and the bulk of it still remains hidden, or has flown away with the vanishing of the moment, the vanishing of that particular instant when you realized a particular emotion. As an officer of the Indian Administrative Service, Sita Kant Mahapatra has held several important positions as Commissioner Home Department, Commissioner Education and Youth Affairs, Commissioner Tribal Development, and Secretary to the Chief Minister, Government of Orissa. Moving to New Delhi, he has been Secretary, Department of Official Languages and Department of Program Implementation, Special Secretary, Planning Commission. Presently, Sita Kant Mahapatra is the Secretary, Department of Culture, Ministry of Human Resource Development. Just as I have used certain fleeting emotions at the level of the individual psyche, as the theme of my poetry, I have also used certain central characters chosen from our mythology to delineate a contemporaneous situation. A poem like Jara uses the archetype of the primitive hunter Jara, who is face to face with the death of a god. In fact, he has killed Krishna with his arrow and when Krishna tells him that it is only an avenging of an earlier death when Jara was Bali and Krishna was Sri Ram in another age, Dwapara, Jara raves at the god and points a finger at the uniqueness and the infinite capability of the gods contrasted with the tiny world of human beings. Jara becomes a symbol for the helpless every man who is enmeshed in the little joys and sorrows, the little truth and falsehood that constitutes human life. Jara therefore declaims any desire either to know the mystery of life and death like Nachiketas or to witness the cosmic vision of the God, which it was the fate of Arjuna to witness. In a similar vein, Yasoda becomes an archetype for anybody who has seen the other view of reality, after seeing which nothing remains the same again. In the Song of Kupcha, which is another uh, use of the same mythological pattern, Kupja's transformation into a beautiful damsel when the curse vanishes 
is the mythic moment of transformation when Krishna touches Kupcha in the streets of Mathura while she applies a tick of sandalwood paste on his forehead, the course vanishes and the hunchback woman suddenly becomes a beautiful damsel. This becomes a central metaphor for our time when we as human beings desiccated, devoid of uh, the central focus of our life, devoid of a true meaning of our significance of our life, suddenly discover something which connects us to our inner being and suddenly we feel that we have found out what life is worth. It is in this sense that I have used some of the central mythical characters to describe and to delineate certain situations which are happening today. In man's journey in life, there are situations where history is without significance and what has happened yesterday can also happen today and in fact is happening today in another form. Amo ka jemiti kehi no thanti digbi dego sunsan ochi khali durant samoy jemiti goli rasta o brukhalata pasu pakhi anabana maniso keiti khali jaha samoy or mela akhi se akhiro joko joko luho dhuli re ude samoy asahay jhari pade jhadanta patra re pila hi jhulu thaye baragacha oholoru झुलु थाए पवन और अदृश्य दोली रे पत्थर रे कांदु थाए अहल्य समय बहु थाए चित्रत पळा अळस सोरे चित्रत पळा सोरे बहे समय प्रवहण खिप्र प्राणमय समुद्र उच्चाटन रे सिहरित आवेग रे शुभ्र मनोमय गां तळ आदि गंत प्रसारित कियारी रे समय धान केंडा रे सुनेली खरा रे दुध भर्ती हो धीरे धीरे पाचई समय समय ही अन्नमय समय ही मटी पिंडमय आरपट मशाणी में मृण्मय शरीर जले चेताग्नि समय ही आत्माराम समय ही शून्य निरामय जमी ए गाँ नुहे अनंत समय बुके छोट बुंदाटीए जा भितर अतीत वर्तमान और भविष्य अपना को खोजी खोजी धंधी है उठाए। Considered the foremost interpreter of oral poetry of Indian tribes, Sita Kant has translated and published nine volumes of tribal poetry with critical notes, including The Empty Distance Carries, Forgive the Words, and The Unending Rhythms. He used his two-year term as a Homi Baba Fellow between 1975 to 1977, again to work amongst the scattered world of Indian tribes. And besides documenting, interpreting and translating the oral poetry, he has written two academic books, Modernization and Ritual and The Realm of the Sacred on the subject, a pioneering work by any standards. My deep attachment to the oral poetry of tribes has a long history. It was 1968 and I had taken over as the Deputy Commissioner of Sundagar district in which the Raurkela still plant and a number of mines are there. Watching the tribals, the boys and girls, men and women returning from the plant or from the mines with songs on their lips I enjoyed the mellifluousness of the songs. When I asked for the text of the songs, I thought that they spoke to me as a practicing poet. For the poems had a compact structure, a vividness and freshness of imagery, and an attempt to speak directly to the other person something which is becoming rarer in modern poetry. I learned these tribal languages, particularly Santali and Mundari, which is a major tribal language, 
and I am fairly fluent in Santali. Later, I went back to the same tribal areas of the Santal areas, the Munda areas in Bihar, Orisha, and West Bengal as a Homi Baba fellow to begin work among them to stay in their villages, to gain their confidence only when you stay in their villages, live their life, and then they open up to you. One needs a bird watcher's complete patience so as to be able to get into their lives. Over the last 20 years or so, I have translated and edited nine anthologies of their oral poetry because I feel that there is something in not only their poetic idiom, their style of narration, but also the worldview which lies behind this poetry, an attachment to life, a determination to be ever grateful to an unknown God, to life itself, which itself is a celebration to them, despite all its deprivations, despite all its problems. That kind of a deep anchorage to life is something which has a charming quality about it. And I have never ceased to wonder how people who are so deprived are still so grateful to the fact of being alive and this gratitude is expressed not only in their poetry but also what is essentially a ritualistic social tradition. It is for this reason that it's not only their poetry which I have translated, somewhere perhaps imperceptibly their worldview has entered into my way of looking at reality and the world, try to be fresh in apprehending reality and emotion, and try to speak the other man as if you were addressing someone very dear to you, and therefore the urgent need to communicate is somewhere in, at the back of your mind. In 1961, the year he joined the Indian Administrative Service, Sita Kant married Basanti. The Mahapatras have two married daughters, Upali Aparajita and Mitali Madhusmita, one unmarried, Swati Sucharita, and a son, Satyakam. <laughs> डॉक्टर सीताकांत महापात्र के भारतीय साहित्य की श्रेणी में वर्ष 1970 बानवे के बीच उनके उत्कृष्ट योगदान के लिए